Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for Dr. Tutula, who's going to present the new milestone. Thank you. Thank you very much, Program Director. I will recognize our Deputy Minister, who is still here with us. We appreciate that. Um, I'll also recognize all our leaders from the tripartite and uh, officials present and everyone in the room. I'm about to present, I don't know, oh here. I'm about to present the main course for today, simply because the highlight of the summit is usually the milestones. And of course, this is the new set of milestones. It's the third set of milestones, the first having, having been set in 2003, the second in 2014, and now we are setting ourselves up for the next 10 years. There'll be the safety milestones, the health milestones, culture transformation, women in mining for the first time, and the center of excellence. On the safety, I have to say that my colleagues in safety had a good time. They actually did not change much. They decided that on elimination of fatalities, they will just make sure that every mining company has a target for zero fatalities. And because their reasoning is that every fatality is a fatality too many. If you remember, we always used to have a target there, like 20% reduction. And in their deliberations this year, they decided that the, 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 what we must strive for is no fatalities, and therefore each company must find a way that in which it has no fatalities. We then have elimination of reportable accidents, and in that they have prioritized the falls of ground, the elimination of falls of ground, the elimination of uh, transport and machinery related um, accidents, the elimination of general report, general reportable um, type incidents. And this is because we sort of have certain categories of injuries, falls of ground, transport and machinery being um, the mo the for in the forefront. But over the years, there has been this general ca category, you know, the slip and fall and many other things. And what was noted is that that group or category is rising and therefore we need to provide or give some attention to that. And on those, they have committed that there should be 20% reduction in all of those categories every year. And the last one they have is the elimination of fatalities and reportable accidents in terms of reviewing the effectiveness of what they are doing. And they have committed that having set those milestones, they are also going to meet two yearly to review the initiatives and uh, to support the efforts, you know, that they are going to be having in that, uh, all, in all of those uh, categories, which is the safety milestones. I'll now move over to the health milestones, starting with the elimination of occupational lung diseases. In, in health, we have got two categories. We've got hygiene, which is the prevention, and we've got the medicine, which is the diseases, and therefore it's the outcomes of where we have failed to uh, control the environment, the exposures. And there we are moving along the lines of what we have been doing, starting with crystalline silica dust, which initially had been, we need to have 95% of all samples being below um, 1%, 1 milligram per cubic meter, that was 20 years ago. 10 years ago, we moved to 0 0.05. And now, for the coming 10 years, we, have, we are moving to 0 0.03. And this will be reviewed in, two, in five years' time, in 2029. By that time, it's also envisaged that the OEL for crystalline silica will have been reduced. Um, that it, in the process, the level is going to be 0 0.05, which used to be our milestone. On overexposures for coal dust, 
we are committing that by that 2034, 95% of all exposures to the respirable coal dust should be 1.25 milligrams per cubic meter. Again, that is a reduction from what we had before, and this milestone will be reviewed in five years. The next one is the one I call the bride, bridesmaid, because the first two are the bride and groom in a way. This one is sort of like just accompanying platinum, platinum dust, and I say that because it's not really a major problem. It's the one milestone that uh, we always meet. And there it's that 95% of um, platinum dust samples should be one milligram per cubic meter. And again, that milestone will be reviewed in five years time. To accompany this, we then have a medical one where we are saying by in 2034, there should be no cases of no of of of, of pneumoconiosis, silicosis, coloracus, pneumoconiosis, any pneumoconiosis, any occupational lung disease. There should be none in employees that are novices. And those novices are the people that will join the industry in January 2025. And therefore over that almost 10 years, we do not want or we aim that there should be no one who develops an occupational lung disease. The next set is the noise milestones. Similar to the previous years, again, we have got um, pieces of equipment where we, at one point, where it was 110, 107 in the last round, and now we're moving down to 104 decibels. And the slight adjustment that's also made there is, it is, it's pieces of equipment operated by a and individual process equipment. We are trying to um, know, uh, to pull it closer to the mine worker because in the mines there are pieces of equipment that are very noisy but are not really uh, impacting on the employees because maybe someone goes there twice a month to go and maintain. And so we want to focus on these pieces of machinery that are constantly being used by our employees. And you will know that that 104, it has been said that it is not protective, and therefore we are expecting that there is going to be a bigger drive for us to promote appropriate, comfortable, usable hearing protection devices. Because if our employees are still exposed at more than 85 decibels, they will, some of them will develop noise-induced hearing loss. The second uh, milestone is that it's uh, now on the medical side, using current diagnostic methods. By December 2034, there should be no novice cases of noise-induced hearing loss, which means for the people that are going to start working in the industry January next year, we don't expect that those people should develop noise-induced hearing loss. And as I said, if we implement all the things uh, I pointed out, that should be possible. The next one is the prevention of HIV, TB and HIV, prevention and reduction. And with the first one, TB, you all heard how we did actually meet that as an industry, but uh, the gold sector did not meet that uh, milestone. So we are saying in, t in 10 years time, the TB incidence in all commodities should be below that of the South African population. The next one is that 95% of employees should be offered HIV counseling and testing annually. And those who are eligible, which means those maybe who do test positive are then linked to an antiretroviral uh, uh, therapy program. This again is um, similar to what we had before, but uh, there was a, an adjustment in the percentage to take into account you know, uh, so that some of the employees do not necessarily have their surveillance all the time. But still, we need to try and achieve that, you know, almost 100% of the employees are counseled. This one is a new, these two are new milestones, one on mental health and awareness. And this is about promotion 
and support of mental health of employees in the industry. I think it was mentioned that mental health is an issue. With retrenchments, you know, again, mental health does come to the fore because uh, there are very high stress levels. Here we are saying that we commit that 95% of employees should be screened annually for mental health problems. And of those then who are found to have a challenge, 100% of them should be referred um, for, in fact, let me read, it's 100% of the screened employees with mental health uh, challenges to be linked to care. And this is both for in-house or uh, referred, uh, um, if the people are referred. The next one is the non-communicable diseases, which the Chief Inspector of Mines has talked to, and the challenge that we have as a country, if I may say, we are one of the most obese nations in the world, and that does lead to a lot of diseases of lifestyle, which are also prevalent in the mining industry. And so we'll be preventing and managing non-communicable diseases. And our milestone is that 100% of the employees that present to our uh, clinics for medical surveillance programs are screened for the risk factors, metabolic risk factors for NCDs. These are things like hypertension, diabetes, because those can then uh, lead to other complications. If now we get to the culture transformation framework, which is a very important um, framework and which I believe maybe we actually do not uh, put as much emphasis as we should. And we hope in the coming 10 years we are going to do more on this. These uh, milestones are similar to the ones we had. The culture transformation framework had a number of pillars, and these five pillars were identified as the first one. We were supposed to probably move on to the next pillars, but we have decided to stay with these ones because we are not yet um, implementing these pillars adequately. And so what has changed here is that we the, the, the date has been shifted. Um, it used to be earlier on. 2016 people needed to have achieved this. So now, um, if I may start with the first one, um, it is that our leaders will lead by example in working the zero harm uh, talk. And here 100% implementation of that pillar on leadership in two years time. So all of these ones in two years time, we would like that 100% of those pillars are implemented. And the next pillars are the one on risk, risk management, and another one is on bonuses and incentives. This one was mentioned, where we said we'll ensure zero harm is a prioritized ahead of production. And through that, we implement the, the pillar on a, a bonus and uh, incentives. The next one is that there'll be no racism, genderism, and any other form of discrimination and for that, we must implement the diversity management pillar. The last pillar is that we will take a common approach to identifying and facilitating the adoption of leading occupational health and safety practices and research outcomes. And we'll adopt mechanization and technology as a key method of eliminating health and safety risks in our industry. And with that, we commit to 100% implementation of the leading practice and uh, technology pillar of the culture transformation framework. The big new one, women in mining. Um, we have two uh, categories. The one is safety and security of women in the mining industry, where it's about elimination of gender-based violence and femicide incidents in the industry and they were looking for a reduction of these incidents. Um, this is a new pillar, and uh, we think, in fact, let me say, the milestones on women in mining are still new, and we are looking to further refinements as we go along. The next is on personal hygiene of women, and we have two areas there. The one is ensuring women have clean, uh, well-maintained, 
ablution and hygiene facilities at all mines, both underground and uh, in, in open cast mines. And here, really, we are asking for very little as women. We're just asking, can we please have clean, well-maintained ablution and hygiene facilities? Which sounds very easy, but there's many a mine where um, women don't have that. And the last one is recognizing the fact that women are actually the ones who bear children. And uh, most of us here in the room have children. If you are a man, your wife, or the children for you, and I'm sure you'd have loved her to continue breastfeeding your child. And she can only do that if she continues to uh, breast, uh, if she is at work, she expresses breast milk. Then she'll be able to continue to breastfeed the child as long as possible. And so it's to ensure nursing mothers have lactation facilities. And um, this is not as difficult as it sounds. Um, you are talking about privacy, a room where there is privacy, there's a bit of comfort, and there is a fridge so that the mother can express breast milk, keep it in the fridge, and go home. And um, I was actually surprised to, I, I did ask my daughter who was breastfeeding if this really does work, and it does. She has been working now for three months, but managed to continue to breastfeed just through that. Uh, I hope I don't start lecturing, but we all know breastfed babies are the healthiest. And so that this is something that we would all love to have in place. The center of excellence is our last milestone where we are looking at capacitating mine employees to effectively manage mine health and safety risks and also to enhance research development and innovation capacity in mine health and safety. And we here have a center of excellence uh, at the Mine Health and Safety Council where we had uh, implemented phase, and we are now looking at implementing phase two of a center of excellence by December 2030. So in conclusion, that is our roadmap with all the activities that are required. We actually do have a summit action plan. So all of those milestones are going to be converted to action plans. And I think that is the most critical part because that's where we say we put in the how. How do we achieve what sometimes look like uh, very unachievable milestones? And the responsible stakeholders are all of us, uh, organized labor, organized business, and the state. And in all of these, we have the leads and supporting uh, actors, and we have target dates, as you have seen. So with that, I thank you very much, and we look forward to all of us making a contribution to realizing those milestones. Thank you. Guys, we can do better than that for Dr. Tutula.